I hate that tractor. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. It's been a minute since we've updated a list of worst tractors to buy. So this year, to clarify, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give you the five worst types of tractors, and then we'll give you the five worst individual tractors as well. Man, do we get a lot of emails on, is this a good deal? What type of tractor should I buy? Look at this auction, blah, 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 blah. Just stuff like this all the time, constantly coming up. It is very challenging to always answer everybody and to give a thorough answer. So let's get to it, the 2024 version of the worst tractors you can buy. Something that I avoid, even though I buy and sell used tractors and I'm always looking for good deals, I never buy auction tractors. That's type number one for you. Type number two. <laughs> Let's extrapolate. Extrapolate's not the right word? We're gonna expound on the extrapolation. Or expungulating. And so what I mean by that is, there's really not deals to be had. The risk reward is just not there. If you are an absolute expert and you do it all the time, maybe. But reason number one, auctions are a bad deal. Are there, well, there's typically big auction fees that are associated with it. There's gonna be uh, sometimes buyer's fees and then there's like closing cost fees and there's all sorts of these other fees depending on the auction that you're at. And so those savings can be washed away just in extra fees that you're paying. Two, well, a lot of these auctions now are online, so you can't get there and inspect it. Three, how do you really inspect it anyways? It's an auction. This is happening on site. You'd have to go there ahead of time. The amount of time that you're spending, the, the effort that you're putting into it to see, well, okay, maybe it needs this, maybe it needs that. I'm only gonna pay this much amount of money. Is this even the real tractor that you want? Because all these factors have to line up in some crazy amount of detail and luck that it's just, it's rarely gonna work out. So. If you buy a used tractor from me or another dealer or even a private individual, there's just inherently a, a higher sense of trust, right? There's, sure the tractor's being sold, but auction tractors typically are thought of as, well, we couldn't sell it any other way, so we gotta put it on auction and the highest bid gets it and gets rid of it. But if you look at these selling prices and auctions and then add on the fees and then compare that to what the lowest 20 or 25% of tractors are going for on Tractor House of that same model, the savings just aren't there. So the risk is too high, the savings aren't there, it just doesn't add up to save maybe a few hundred bucks compared to what you could find shopping, one, shopping for one on Tractor House or on Facebook Marketplace. It's just too risky, it's a bad use of money. Type number two, electric tractors. I don't think we're there yet, I really don't. And we're getting almost further away from it because it sounds like, based on what I've seen in, on YouTube, Select Track, probably the, the top option in the electric tractor space, is it seems belly up. If they're not belly up, they're pretty darn close to it. It seems like there's no communication coming from the company with the influencers that they've been working with. Dealers are, are not selling them anymore in their dealer network. It's uh, a pretty bad spot there. On top of that, man, I, I don't, you're gonna have to get a lot more robust electrical system for the, the power of the unit, the duration it can last in order to make it successful. I think that there's probably a small niche that it'll work for, but that's not how you really saturate a market. That means it's not the right machine for most of the audience watching out here. Even the electric car fad seems to be fading away uh, quite a bit there, you know, sales are slumping as um, we're putting this video out. There's just continuous headlines about they're just not meeting sales ex expectations. You know, kind of the, the, the veils being brought down on that too with how maybe unclean it really is with how they're sourcing batteries and materials for that and, and whatnot. So that's a whole other tangent, but I think we're too early in the electric tractor stage to consider them being a viable option, especially in the secondhand market. So I would rule those out. The third type of tractor, ones without a loader on them. You think you found a great deal, man, this beautiful low hour tractor, but it doesn't have a loader, no problem. I'll just get one in the used market somewhere, piece of cake, and I'll have a steal of a deal. I'm gonna tell you what, that's not gonna happen. I mean, for one out of 10,000, maybe, <laughs> but for most of you out there thinking that's a good idea, do not do it. In fact, I made the notes 
the general notes for this video a few weeks ago, well, maybe longer than that, but even just yesterday before we shot this video, I had a guy reach out. He wanted a 430 loader, I think it was, for like a John Deere 4400, an early 2000s model. It's like, man, these things just don't exist. You have to go into the aftermarket world, okay, and go to loaders.com, Westendorf. They sell aftermarket loaders that'll fit pretty much every tractor out there, but you're going to be paying new pricing. Um, I really don't think their prices are much lower than an OEM, but you can't even get a brand new 430 loader anymore. You can't get a brand new loader to fit that series of tractor. If you're looking to buy used, that means you're looking to save money. And so if you then have to put a brand new loader on it, whether it's an OEM version or an aftermarket version, you're negating the savings and the whole mindset of going used to save money. So that rules that out. And then trying to find one in the used market is really a needle in a haystack. And if you do find one, maybe it's on the other side of the country. It doesn't financially make sense to ship it over here. It's, it's just a bad idea and one I would avoid. Type number four, two wheel drive tractors. Okay, and yeah, there's probably some spots that those are okay. But for most of my viewership, most of my market, most of my audience, to clarify, if I haven't made that clear, I buy and sell used tractors and we sell brand new attachments. We ship them all over the country. That's just, that's just what we do. So I live and breathe this market and it's very rare to even have customers reach out when they're looking for an attachment that own a two-wheel drive tractor. 99% of them are four-wheel drive. Yes, they cost more than a two-wheel drive tractor, but it opens up the versatility. Most of the country, whether it's up north or down south, you're going to have some sort of conditions that require or mm, would greatly benefit from having four-wheel drive or um, you know, front-wheel assist, uh, depending on the manufacturer. It may be called one or the other, but you know, whether it's clay down south or ice and snow up north or just general mud and hills that you're dealing with, the ability to have the four-wheel drive is a game changer. And on top of that, when you are in four-wheel drive, the braking system engages the front axle then as well. And so that's a safety factor that increases if you are in slick conditions and have a load that's pushing you out of control or anything else. It's just going to give you a little better chance of going home at the end of the day. And as cameraman Chris just reminded me, even getting onto a trailer a couple of different times, we've needed four wheel drive. It's been so slick because of rain or snow where just the two wheel drive would not get it on the trailer. As soon as we engaged four wheel drive, no problem, piece of cake got right up there. So there's just a lot of benefits that, well, and I guess even most of us, like it or not, are going to sell a tractor at some point. And so it's going to be much easier to sell a four-wheel drive tractor than a two-wheel drive. And you're going to recoup most of that cost that you invested up front anyways because of that. The final type of tractor would be discontinued out of production models. While you may get some good values up front by doing so, trying to find service, parts, support, is going to be harder and harder as time goes on. And unless you are a guy that just loves wrenching and figuring out problems instead of working with your tractor to get projects done, I would avoid those. It's just not worth the headache. And then if you do go to sell it down the road, it's gonna be that much harder to do. So it's a bad use of money, okay? With, with limited capital that you have, put it in the right type of machine, avoid all the types of machines that we just said, and you're gonna really steer yourself in the right direction. All right, so this is the type of video where there are a lot of opinions, good and bad, you know, both agreeing with me, disagreeing with me. So if you have another type of tractor that people should avoid, please do them a favor, list it in the comments down below. And if you think I'm wrong, I'd love to hear why. Just leave a comment about that too. And, you know, there's exceptions to every rule. So I, I go into these videos understanding that, right? That everything I've said, there's going to be somebody out there who can say, yeah, but and they'll be right for their situation. So this is just a general rule. If you're the exception, good for you. So on to the five specific tractors. Not much has changed over the years. And part of the reason for that is that, well, tractors are generally pretty simple machines. They're not complex like a Ford Super Duty truck that, man, those things are, I can't even imagine having to work on those now. But tractors are just, compact tractors are a different story, subcompact tractors too, where 
The manufacturers have proven the designs out. You know, John Deere, for example, has, they've made name changes. They've made some minor tweaks here and there, but like the current John Deere 3R series, for example, was the 3X20 series before that. That goes all the way back to, I think, 2007, like the John Deere 3320, 3520, 3720. Those are, well, and the 3120, but now you have the 3033R, 3039R, 3046R. The loaders are the same. There's no, been no change in lift capacity, lift height, machine weight. The frames are the same size. The tires are the same size. I think even the seats are the same, unless something's changed in the last year. You know, you have little changes to the, um, to the control station the, and the controls on how they're laid out and whatnot. But by and large, and there's emissions on there now too, but by and large, that series since 2007, it's 2024 for 17 years, is essentially the same machine. So if there was a problem with that series, it would have been rooted out by now. Or if there is a problem, it's not big enough for them to warrant any change about it. The, I mean, the 3E series has been around essentially the same thing, a few tweaks here and there. They added a roll bar um, in the mid 2010s, I think it was, and 2018, they redesigned the cosmetic portion of it and the, the loader styling, but the capacities, the performance of it didn't change. They also did make it a little bit more robust uh, throughout the frame and the, and the chassis of it to support a backhoe. The, the pre-2018 versions couldn't take that. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent, but that's kind of painting the picture of why the issues are limited and why there's not all these new tractors that are on this list. And so that's reassuring for you folks that re really regardless of manufacturer you look at, the vast majority of machines out there are gonna be very robust and very reliable and you're gonna have the same things that go wrong on most of them, like a axle seal leaking. You can pretty much count on that at some point if you own a tractor and use a front end loader. So the first one though, actually, fair warning John Deere owners, I've got most of the five tractors on this list are John Deere tractors and I'll explain why. But the John Deere 2320 is the first one on the list. The one and only time I bought a John Deere 2320, I was welcome to the world of the problems with this machine. My drive shaft that I had, I owned this tractor for, I think less than two hours. The drive shaft sheared off inside the transaxle housing and just fluid just drained out. Ended up, it was gonna be over a $4,000 repair. Um, it was over $1,000 in parts. And then the rest of that was all labor. I actually had that tractor sold. The customer just, it was paid for in full. The customer hadn't picked it up yet. They needed to wait a week or so for delivery. And I was simply moving it around from point A to point B. And that's when that transaxle gave out. And so I'm thankful that it did instead of it having the customer and that being a really hairy situation. I was able to just refund them. I listed the tractor for sale in as is condition and just waited for a guy who was knowledgeable enough to do all the labor himself and just had to pay for the parts. So I was able to minimize my loss on that machine. Just Google John Deere 2320 problems and you'll find a lot of information about that. There was uh, no way and no mention of greasing the, uh, the backside of the drive shaft there. And that's where the majority of these problems occur. So avoid that model. The John Deere 2210 is the next model on this list and it shares the same issues as the 2320. But on top of that, they tend to have some rear PTO issues as well with that not working. And the problem with both of these issues is that you need to get into that rear transaxle. That's just a super labor intensive job to deal with and therefore it's very expensive. I no longer buy either of those models because of these issues. Let's lay off John Deere for just a minute and talk about Kubota, all right? The Kubota B3350, no longer in production. It's been replaced by the LX series, like the LX3310, LX3320 now maybe, I can't remember. But the point being, this model is no longer in production, kind of like those previous two John Deere models we talked about. This one had major issues with the regen system, okay, where folks would spend more time with it in the shop than actually using the machine. Kubota would not step up to the plate. Rumor is that's been taken care of now after years and years and years of complaints and years and years and years of warranty issues and then out of warranty issues with cash coming out of customers' pockets. Just a bad way to do it. I'm glad that they stopped making that model and they got everything figured out, but they say, okay, this was um, told to me by a couple of Kubota dealers, 
when they were trying to sell me some to only sell these machines down south, that they tend to perform better down south than up north in colder conditions. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, or if it's just kind of a, a hunch, you know, but regardless, avoid that model unless you just like problems and headaches, then it's a great model for you. Our final two machines are both gonna be John Deere's, all right? So four out of the five machines on this list are John Deere. What's that all about? Aren't they the leader in this whole thing? Well, yeah, but when you're on top, when you're king, this comes with greater responsibility, greater expectations, at least in my opinion, okay? I think you need to have, well, they're charging a premium, right? They're charging the most for their tractors. So I think if you charge the most, you should get the most, but that's just not the case with these next couple of John Deere's. I, I almost, it's hard not to smile saying the John Deere 2025R because I get punished from you 2025 owners out there all the time when I do this. And that's great. I'm glad you love your machines. I hate that machine. I don't get it, right? You have the John Deere 1025R, which is a, sub, a subcompact. You have the John Deere 2032R, which is the next full frame size up compact. Then you make this little one and a half series that has the same loader as a 1025R, the same lift capacity, same lift height. It's as skinny as a 1025R, but you put bigger tires on it. So you made it taller. You kept it as skinny. You raise the center of gravity to make it super tippy. You give it the same baby loader on the subcompact. I don't, I don't get it. It's like you made a more unstable tractor that doesn't do hardly anything more. I hate that tractor. Like when I've been on that, I feel on the hills that we have around here, which a lot of you would not even call it hills. You'd call it flat ground, super unstable on there. I mean, this is a machine you gotta add wheel spacers to. You gotta add rim guard. <laughs> Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, you gotta add wheel weights, all that stuff to lower that center of gravity. Also, it's very odd. When I've had a set of pallet forks on the front of a 2025R and a backhoe on the back, it's been so light on the front end where I struggle to steer. I, I have never experienced something like that with another model of tractor of any brand out there. Just the, just the 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 25R. <laughs> but that's it. I'm off my high horse. I just don't like that model. That's a personal thing. You guys go ahead and replace this. I, and again, if you have different tractors, specific tractors that you would say stay away from, that's fine. I've had quite a few 2020, I can't say that, 2025 hours come through my shop and it's just not the tractor for me. So if you've had one tractor and it's been the 2025 and it's your favorite machine that you've had, that's great. That's your one piece of experience. I've just had a, a, a world of experience with all kinds of compact tractors. And for me, that's on the bottom of the list. The final one, the John Deere 3E series. Yep. Again, this is because you have higher expectations, John Deere. You gotta live up to that, all right? If you compare the 3E series to its direct competitor as close as you can get, which is the Kubota Standard L series, you're losing in pretty much every category. It's, it's a lightweight machine. It's got really limited lift capacity to it. It's only got the two range hydro versus the three range on the Kubota. The price tag on those things are insane for what they do. I mean, it's, it's a very limited capability machine. I get it. It's a simple machine. It's just a, a kind of a, an economical workhorse that maybe a chore horse almost is what it is because it can do basic stuff around the property. You can brush hog, it can, you know, it can lift up a scoop of dirt and whatnot, but it's, it's underwhelming. I lifted, or I had to lift a safe at uh, my old house. And it was the first time that I had actually, well, I had a set of pallet forks in it. And even with weight on the back, still lifted a tire off the back of the ground. It wouldn't lift the, the safe up, which was a pretty, it was about, a thousand pound safe, so it was a good size one, but just even just lift it off the ground. I had to lift it a few inches off the ground on pallet forks and scoot it along and it wouldn't do it. Um, 
time and time again, you know, when folks are asking what tractor do I need and they have these certain requirements they have to do, lifting round bales can be done with a 3E, but it's like, it's not easily lifting them. It's not lifting them and stacking them double high very easily. I mean, it's like you're pushing it almost to the max without leaving any room for margin to work with. It's for the money that they cost, they should have a lot more capability is what I'm getting at. And there's folks that are on both sides of that fence. There's some folks out there that have had a 3E and absolutely love it. And again, I think that that comes from not really having other machines, but that's just their experience. And so they don't know any different, but that's been my job is to use all the different brands of tractors and different models of tractors. And then I can kind of scale them, right? And compare them against one another. And the 3E series is a letdown. But I say all that, but John Deere does such a good job marketing that when we get 3E series in, folks eat them up. They love them. And so everybody has different priorities, different needs. And so for some folks, it's the right tractor for them. So in my opinion, you can spend that same amount of money and get a lot more capability, you know, out of the Kubota or Coyote. We've been talking a lot about Coyote. They're kind of, in my opinion, the next, the next up and comer right on the heels of those guys. They're significantly cheaper. Their capability is great. They had the twin touch pedal, three range hydro, more lift capacity, heavier, a lot of standard features that that 3E series doesn't have. But the same can be said for LS, TYM, uh, and some of the others that are out there too. It's, there's just a lot of up and comers that are knocking on the door. Dealer networks are expanding. There's, it's good to have options. Let's put it that way. So folks, that's just one guy's opinion, all right? Now, this guy does happen to live and breathe the industry, but it's still just my opinion. I'm gonna have my own preferences of what I like and what I don't like, but a lot of that also goes into what I think my customers want to. I'm, I try to align my expectations with yours and be on the same page, and I want you to get the best value that you can, but it can be tough to do that on a case-by-case -case basis. And so hopefully this video kind of encapsulate, encapsulate, encapsulate. Hopefully this video encompasses a lot of those thoughts that are rolling around up here and maybe rolling around in your head as you look for a tractor. You know, talk to other people too. Go to the forums, you know, go to Facebook groups, all that kind of stuff and, and see what they have to say. At the end of the day, you got to make your own opinion. If you can get out on a few machines and drive them around, see what fits, what feels comfortable to you, that's going to make a difference as well. But if you have any questions, we're happy to help. Just shoot us an email. We can help you pick out a tractor. We can help you pick out tractor attachments. Again, we ship these things nationwide. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.